Great. So at Polygon, we are introducing a new class of drugs based on a revolutionary approach, the combination of cardiology and immunology. My name is Tatiana, I'm co-founder at Polygon Therapeutics, and let me take you into a journey for better cardiovascular care. So cardiovascular diseases persist as the leading cause of death globally today. And one of the most frequent one is myocardial infarction, commonly known as heart attack, and it affects 7 million people every year in the world. Curant care consists of unblocking the artery to avoid the patient deaths on the short run. But despite the improvements in the myocardial infarction care across the past 20 years, its long-term outcome remained problematic. So one in three patients will have, after the crisis, major cardiovascular events, such as recurrence, heart failure, and eventually death. We know that a big problem during infarction is the immune response. Our scientific co-founder has shown in a publication in Nature Communication in 2021, something very new. CD8 plus T cells play a pathogenic role in myocardial infarction. So basically what happens, the cells migrate into the heart and they worsen the infarct. And so we've showed that depleting these cells to avoid them from entering into the heart is protective. So we have designed the first human anti-CD8 depletant monoclonal antibody to be administered in the cat lab right after the crisis and after the coronary intervention. Our candidate has been validated in vivo and in vitro and showed optimal efficacy and tolerance. The immunosuppression is transient and only affects CD8 plus T cells without impacting other immune cells. Also, the CD8, both naive and memory cells, recover in a one to two months window. So let me show you how it works. Here you can see very remarkable data on the hearts of mice and pigs. And pigs are, by the way, gold standard for cardiovascular diseases. So here you have a reduction in fox size by 60% and an improvement in the heart function by 25%. And we have human biopsies that shows the clinical translational potential of our approach. Behind Polygon, there are three co-founders, complementary. We have a, uh, a pharmacist business profile as CEO. We have the physician behind the proof of concept as CSO, and myself, a pure business profile as CEO. We have a team split between a headquarter and an R&D unit covering all the expertise needed for drug development. And we're further backed by a scientific advisory board comprising key opinion leaders in drug development and clinical trials. Our markets of focus are Europe and the USA backed uh, by three patents. And so 1.5 million uh, victims per year in these geographies when we look at expected pricings and a penetration, we estimate a product potential of 4.5 billion euros annually at maturity. Other players are exploring uh, immunity in cardiology, but their approach is rather indirect, meaning they look at general inflammation, whereas we are the only player focusing on the direct killer in the game, CD8 plus T cells. Regarding the roadmap, we're currently into the preclinical activities, manu manufacturing our GLP batch to perform all the regulatory tests. We then plan a phase one on healthy volunteers in the middle of 2025 to show safety signals, but also target engagement since we can measure CD8 plus T cell depletion on healthy volunteers. Then the idea is to perform a phase 2A and 2B to show efficacy with uh, the measure of the ejection fraction. And the ejection fraction is predictive of MACE, major adverse cardiovascular events, that is precisely the readout for the phase three. So we believe we have a design that we enable to capture data showing a great potential for a partnership for a big pharma uh, over the, the phase two. Regarding the financing, we've successfully raised the pre-seeds and the seeds 
to reach the clinic doorsteps. And right now we are structuring a Series A to cover for the early clinical phases. Cardiovascular disease, cardio, cardio immunology, sorry, is really a hot topic and you can be part of it. Get in touch. The girl, you wanna go first? Please. Uh, sure. Um, so, well, thank you very much. It was very nicely presented, so we're very concise. Um, so one reason why all the trials fail, typically for myocardial infarction, is because the disease is very complex and the patients are very heterogeneous and there's not a clear path uh, with the regulatory agencies. So with the 15 to 20 million euro Series A, how are you planning to circumvent this? And have you already have a clear plan for the clinical development and clinical trial design? Yeah. So for, for, for the phase one, it's on healthy volunteers to show uh, the depletion and the safety. So on, on this on this regard, that there, there, there won't be any you know challenge. And for the phase two, um, basically sometimes indeed we get the question about the recruitment of patients. And so the idea uh, is to administrate the, the treatment at in the cat lab. So it's very uh, in a way convenient because it's a window of um, it's a therapeutic window that is already existing. And the scientific co-founder with whom we're working is also performing several clinical trials on myocardial infarction, but for academic uh, trials. And they, they, they manage you know, to recruit the patient. So it, it should be OK. And so first, we'll have this phase 2A you know, to calibrate a bit the doses and to show safety on, on patients. And then, so on 30, 40 patients, and then we will move to really um, the, the efficacy measurement on 250 to 300 patients for the phase 2B. Uh, so what one relevant point will be safety. Uh, although I understand that this will be a one-shot treatment, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, the uh, target is very is a very um, sensitive target, uh, CD8 plus. So, uh, could you elaborate a bit more about how you're going to generate long term safety data? Yeah. So first thing is that indeed, like our map, our antibody is super specific. Uh, it only targets a CD8 plus T cell without impacting other immune cells. So you have like all the, all the other immune subsets that are still there. And it's it's transient. After like one month, you know, you have a recovery of CD8 plus T cells. So indeed, uh, this is something that we need to monitor um, to, to make sure that the patients are not at risk uh, with, with the treatment. But for sure, what we will do is that we will provide a prophylaxia. This is a... The, the, the standard of care when you give immunosuppression to make sure there won't be any problem. Also, people with active cancer and um, other uh, like hepatitis, these kind of uh, pathology won't be included uh, in, uh, in the clinical trials. And just a, a word, uh, most of the immunosuppressive su suppressive treatments right now, nowadays, are chronic and despite the fact that they are chronic, people are, are okay, for instance, with rituximab or anti tnf you, you don't have data showing any, you know, um, like major problem with uh, with the immunosuppression. Our su suppression is very stringent. So we, we believe it will be okay, but it's, it's correct that these are things that we need to monitor super, super uh, specifically in clinical trials. Hi, Tavia. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Very short question uh, related to the patient selection, if you want to call it patient stratification. Um, this patient, when they're on, especially at the cat lab, they have different grade of damage of the heart. And you yeah. showed 25% increase in heart function, whatever. Is this a number that reflects also the stage of the patient or the, the damage, heart damage that the patient has it? And therefore, would you apply this kind of therapy to all of them or to... No. No, basically mm -hmm. our our target it's thirty percent of patients that we are able to identify right away uh, at the bedside with very easy clinical uh, measure. 
for instance, uh, the Kilip score, you have it in like one second. And with this score, you are able to say, okay, is it in our 30% target or not? So we are only taking the most severe um, infarcts. Okay, thank you.